Welcome to a spooky Halloween edition of Phonehead Commander, where we take on the zombie horde. The horde was initially suggested to us by YouTube user Michael Palia many, many months ago. The parties involved in this excursion to the Land of the Dead are Nick playing his Muzio Visionary Architect deck, Trey playing Omnath Locus of Mana, John playing his Sliver Queen deck, and myself playing my Door in the Siege Tower deck. There is a link below for my Horde deck list, but for this game we are using John's Horde deck, which is similar to mine. For those who are unfamiliar with Horde Magic, it features players teaming up to fight the Horde deck, which plays itself. In this case, we are choosing to go with Zombies. The team has a shared life total, and the Horde has no life at all. You can play that each player adds 20 life to the group total, but for this game, in order to make things more interesting, each player will add 15 life to the total, starting us at 60 life. Also, the Horde's first turn starts after the team's second turn. The team takes their turns together. The Horde plays by revealing cards from the top of its library until a non-token card is revealed. All other cards are revealed and put onto the battlefield, and the non-token spell is cast. The zombies have haste and must attack each turn. The Horde has all the mana it needs to play propaganda, costs, and similar effects. Also, cards like Platinum Angel and Crawl Space don't affect the Horde. Each player decides if and how they want to block. If a card is bounced to the Horde's hand, it's recast again next turn. Cards with flashback will also be cast again next turn after the first spell for the Horde is cast. The Horde has no life, but for each one point of damage dealt to it, it mills one card. The game is over when the Horde has no more cards in its library, hand, or on the field. Any effects requiring a decision are done as randomly as possible. I play Forest, cast Exploration, and then play Sand Step Citadel. The other players each play a land. We go to our next turn. John, Demonic Tutors, I play Selesnia Sanctuary, Bouncing a Forest, and then playing Moss War Bridge and Hide Away a card. For the Horde's first turn, it casts Festering March, not doing anything at the moment, but it does get exiled with three time counters on it. On our turn, everyone plays a land. Nick plays Burnished Heart. I play Marari's Wake. The Horde unleashes four zombies and then casts Yubel Sar Gatekeepers. The Horde attacks us for 10. Trey misses a land drop in an Omnath deck and then casts Omnath. I cast a Vertiloth and then kick it for five Sapper lanes. John plays Temple Garden untapped, dealing the team two damage and then casts Reap and Sow, putting Boros Gilgate onto the battlefield. Nick casts Thran Dynamo. On the Horde's turn, it doesn't reveal any tokens, but it casts Army of the Darned, putting 13 tokens onto the battlefield. The Horde attacks with its zombies, all of which I block and kill with my creatures. At the end of the Horde's turn, Nick breaks his Burnished Heart to put two islands onto the table. On our turn, Nick casts Caged Sun, meaning blue. John casts Doubling Season and Mystical Tutor, putting a Wargate on top. I cast Anafenza. Omnath casts Primordial Hydra for three. The Horde recasts Festering March, giving our creatures minus one, and then suspends it again. The Horde then casts Grave Betrayal, incentivizing us not to lose creatures. Nick then hinders Army of the Damned. All the zombies attack. I cast Reach of Branches, putting a Tree Folk token onto the battlefield. Nick Cyclonic Rifts, returning one of the zombies to the Horde's hand. I block eight of the zombies with my creatures, killing all eight zombies and my sapperlings. The leftover zombies deal us eight damage. Trey doubles the counters on Primordial Hydra. I play Forced and return Reach of Branches to my hand. John casts Assemble the Legion, which along with Doubling Season should make for a happy Halloween. Nick and I both play our commanders. Nick then plays out the rest of his hand with Scarecrone, Soul of New Phyrexia, and Solemn Simulacrum. On the Horde's turn, it recasts the Bounce Zombie from last turn 
and then cast Liliana Reaver. The Horde attacks. We are careful not to block Liliana's Reaver because whatever it kills, the Horde is going to steal with the Great Betrayal. I recast Reach Up Branches and block the Reaver with the Tree Folk token so that when the token dies, Horde won't get it. I block and kill four more zombies with my other creatures. Nick blocks a zombie with the Soul of New Phyrexia and the last zombie with Muzio. The Horde ends its turn with only one zombie left. Trey doubles Primordial Hydra while John wargates for four, putting Elspeth Knight Errant onto the battlefield. John negates Elspeth, giving him an indestructible emblem. Nick uses Muzio, putting Mind's Eye onto the battlefield. Trey attacks the Horde with the Hydra, dealing it 12 damage, milling that many cards. On its turn, the Horde casts Dross Prowler, again not hitting any tokens. Nick draws a card with Mind's Eye. I block and kill both creatures. Nick returns Burnished Heart with Scarecrow and then sacks it to get two more islands. On our turn, Trey doubles the heads of his Hydra. John makes eight Soldier Legion tokens and I cast Phyrexian Arena. Nick uses Muzio to put Kaldat the Forge Master onto the battlefield and then casts Nevenril's Disc. Trey attacks with Hydra and John attacks with his Soldier tokens, dealing the Horde and milling 36 cards. John casts Aura Shards, as we think we are in the clear from the Horde. The Horde recasts Festering March again, killing all of John's indestructible creatures. The Horde then plays three zombie tokens and a Diagraph Ghoul. The Ghoul enters tapped and the other zombies attack, all of which I block and kill. John adds counters to the Legion and then makes 12 soldiers, Hydra and so forth. The Aura Shards blow up Great Betrayal. We attack and mill the rest of the Horde's deck. John casts Ral Zarek and shoot the Diagraph Ghoul, killing it. This only leaves one last Army of the Damned in the Horde's graveyard. So for the sake of finishing the game as quickly as possible, Nick activates the disc, blowing up everything, killing the Horde's creatures and winning us the game. I think we'll have to make the Horde more powerful in the next game. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it and have a happy Halloween.